It's 5.30 and we continue to follow the investigation into the Port Richmond explosion. From Drone Watch 3, you can see all of the devastation. Let's go back to Natasha Brown. She is live right now in Port Richmond along Miller Street. Natasha, you've been looking at the damage and how the city is now helping these residents who are affected. It really is a difficult situation to see up close and personal here in Port Richmond, Yuki and Jessica. We are here in the 3500 block of Miller Street, and we have seen nothing but pretty much damage and destruction. We've had to walk around much of the debris that's been left here on the sidewalks and the streets, at least for a block or so away. We're seeing that kind of debris. We're also seeing the two houses that seem to be the catalyst behind this explosion that have been obliterated. They have many of the debris there, and the damage has been removed and other homes, as many as 48, have been damaged in some way by this explosion. Here is what we know so far. A gas leak is suspected as the cause of this explosion, but still no official word even at this hour. The explosion destroyed three houses, damaged dozens of others just hours into the new year. Five people were injured, and I did speak to Philadelphia City Council members Mark Squilla and Michael Driscoll about the city's response to this tragedy. Councilman, what can you tell us so far about what you learned? Well, first of all, they're in the, they're done phase one, which is the excavation of the the project right now, and now they're going to go into phase two, which is to uh, make sure everything is cleared and safe. There's still a lot of work to go. There's still an ongoing investigation to find out the the root cause of it. But I think our concern, uh, Councilman Driscoll and myself, is really to get the people and the residents as much information as they need, so they could start the process of bringing their lives back together. What will you tell them at this point? Because there are so many homes we see that are damaged, not just the two that are obliterated here, but there are so many people who have damage to their homes at this point. Well, I think they need to get in touch with their homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance as soon as possible and be very cautious with telling them, to, you know, because a lot of times when you have a tragedy like this, there's people giving you cards and say sign here, sign there. We're telling them to talk to their homeowner's insurance first and then we're going to figure out what other resources that the city and state may or may not be able to bring to this situation. Do you know how many people right now have been affected and where they are right now? What help are they getting? Yeah, there's 48 uh, houses that had received some form of damage, including the uh, Samuel Spec Center here. And right now, the, the main object is to make sure that they could get everything out of their homes. There's an action team that has been on place to allow people in and out of their properties to get things that they need. That's still ongoing right now. And the goal would be, like uh, Councilman Driscoll said, is to make sure they contact their homeowners immediately or, or use a, a well represented or somebody they feel comfortable with as an insurance adjuster to come in there, somebody they could trust because you want to work with somebody who you know and feel comfortable with. And then we're going to work with PDW, the city risk managers, to find out as this investigation goes on the cause of it and then get people additional information. We're going to we talk to our state colleagues, uh, State Rep. Hohenstein and uh, Tartaglione, State Senator Tartaglione. Uh, they're going, we're having a meeting on Wednesday uh, right down the street here at the Columbia Club with PDW and some city services to get more information to the, the residents so that they could feel comfortable starting to make that adjustment to get back to some type of normality. And this is going to be a lengthy process. I'm sure folks will be displaced for quite some time, possibly. Well, we're hope we, uh, unfortunately, yes, but we're hoping to provide as much guidance and, and help as we can because they're, they're shell-shocked, and not, no pun intended, and they're, they really just want to get their lives back together. Well, the council members who both represent this district also urged impacted residents to keep receipts and also take pictures of everything for the insurance company. They do want to make sure that everyone has this information. They say right now they're so happy to see us here so that we can get the information out to residents who are now just scattered about. They are no longer able to get back into their homes. They're finding refuge with friends and families. They just need to know how to get the help that they will most certainly need at this hour. Jessica. Back to you. All right, Natasha, thank you. And please stay with CBS 3 for continuing coverage of the Port Richmond explosion. When we are not on television, you can always find the latest on the investigation on our website, cbsphiladelphia.com.